friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Hello Bluebird Country Roads background, as well as Picked For You, Pumpkin Time, and Tabitha. So I've stamped my images out on two separate panels of Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'm going to be creating a card depicting my favorite literary character, Anne of Green Gables. And I went back and forth on which girl to use because the dress and shoes from the Tabitha stamp set are actually more appropriate to the time period than the girl in the Picked For You stamp set. But there's no cat in Anne of Green Gables and I couldn't really figure out a way to remove that cat without making it look funny. So I ended up going with the girl from Picked For You and I think she does have a whimsical expression on her face that suits Anne. So I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers and I'm gonna start with my background. And I did recently use this background in another video. So I wanted to do the sky very differently. I did a sunrise background in that video. So today we're just going to go with a cloudy blue sky. So I'm starting with B00 and laying in a little color at the horizon line. And then I'm going to begin to blend that out with the B quadruple zero. As I go up the panel, I'm going to skip some areas and leave them white so that it creates that cloudy effect. And I'm going to continue that all the way up the rest of the sky there. And um, I know I'm going to be creating a fall card. I did want to just address that since it is spring here. Um, but there is a quote from one of the other stamp sets, the Pumpkin Time stamp set from Ella Montgomery. It is a direct quote from Anne of Green Gables and it mentions the word October. So it just seemed fitting to do this scene in fall colors. And I was so excited to run with this idea. So I didn't want to wait until fall to do it. So I hope you'll pardon the color palette today. But um, anyway, I'm moving on to adding a little bit of B41 into my sky just to create a bit more depth. Again, doing that little streaky motions to create that cloudy look. And that's going to continue to develop as I blend that back out with that B quadruple zero once again. I also wanted to mention that I apparently brought in a little friend with me, which you can see kind of crawling around on that panel. I um, picked some of my lilacs from my lilac bushes because we were going to get a whole lot of rain and I knew that it would knock all the petals off of the bushes and lilacs are my favorite. So I picked myself a bouquet and brought that in on my desk and apparently that little guy came along for the ride. So um, I just kind of pushed him out of the way and continued on with the coloring. Next, I wanted to move on to the far hill. And in my previous video, I colored that in some green tones. I thought today I would mix it up and maybe make it look like a wheat field or some kind of um, harvest since they did live on a farm and there were lots of prairie grasses and things around on Prince Edward Island where Anne of Green Gables is set. So I decided to create that with that far hill. I started with a layer of Y000 and then added in a little Y21 and then I'm going to darken that up at the bottom with the Y26 and then I'll blend that back out with the Y21 and add that Y triple zero back to the top because that would be where the sun would be hitting it the most. So I wanted the top of that to be the lightest area. I did do another layer of that off screen just to save some time in this very long video. And then I used E40 to add just a little bit of shading to Green Gables and also to the fence rail that is outside. So for the roof of Green Gables, I'm going to obviously be doing that in some green tones. The first shade I picked was G43. I did a full coat of that. And then I'm coming in with G46 and darkening that up a bit on the ridge line. And then also down the backside a little bit more than the front. You'll see that 
Um, I blended that out with the G43 again before I'm going to add my darkest tone, which is the G28. So again, I'm going to go up to that ridge line and then carry that down the back of the roof and then blend that out with the G46 once again. And then I'll use the G43 for the highlight area. Now, because Green Gables, you know, when you think of it in the in the movie or also in the book or in your mind's eye, it usually has some shutters around the windows. So I went ahead and drew those in with a Memento Tuxedo Black marker just to make it look a little bit more like the house that we all know in our imaginations. And I colored that with the same tones as the roof. I added a warm glow inside with the Y11, and then for the tree behind the house, I used E47 and E44 for the trunk. Just added a little shading with that E47 and filled in with the E44. For the tree top, I wanted it to be white because Anne loves those trees that she calls the white way of delight on the avenue um, but you it's hard to shade white on a tree I didn't want to go gray because that doesn't look very lively so I went with some super pale violets I used V00 and V000 and I really like how that turned out and then for the grass in front, I again wanted to use some different tones than I used in my previous video using this background. So I'm using some more yellow greens. I used G00 to add in some color just to kind of saturate that paper and get a base layer down. So while I'm doing that, I just wanted to let you know that I actually had the idea for this card at the very end of filming the previous card where I used this background, I was looking at that card and I had colored the little girl with some kind of um, strawberry blonde hair. And I thought, oh my gosh, this could really be Anne of Green Gables if I had colored her hair a little bit more red and if I had colored the house, you know, to look like Green Gables. It just hit me and I was so excited and couldn't wait to try that out. So I, I didn't want to do like the same type of video for you guys again so soon, but I was just so excited about it. And I tried to mix it up by changing the orientation of that background, number one, and then just totally mixing up the color palette. So I hope you guys can appreciate that. Um, I used YG03 to add a bit of shading and then I'm going to do a second layer of this off screen and that is really going to smooth out that blend. Then I'm going to add in YG05 to darken things up even further and on the left hill I'm darkening it up along the pathway. I'm doing that as well on the right hand side but also casting a little shadow in front of that tree. So then I'm going to blend that back out with the YG03 just doing some nice flicking motions with the side of my marker so I get those nice broad strokes and then doing the same with the YG00. going to take that YG05 and just darken up those grassy areas to create a little bit more texture and just draw your eye to those areas that the artist has uh, sketched in for us. So just real quick and easy following those lines. And then I'm going to move that black piece of cardstock over to the right hand side so that I can color the tree and you know, not worry about getting any marker on my work surface if I go over the edge. So I'm actually using some brand new markers. I just got a few new Copics and some of them were the E80s. So I'm starting with E81 and laying in some base coat there and basically just kind of figuring out where I want my darkest colors to be. There's a lot of texture to play with on this tree. So I'm just um, following those lines and um, adding that in to create a really rough looking tree. 
So I apologize that that cap is just out of view, but this is the E84, and that is what I am going to use for my mid-tone on this tree. And this time I'm being a lot rougher, and you can see I actually got some brown on my background, which I did not intend to do. I always feel a little bit of pressure to hurry on these videos because they do take a really long time, and I know I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys that you don't mind the longer videos, but this one was really long. I mean, the raw footage was like an hour and a half long, so... I was trying to hurry and it didn't serve me very well, but I used my colorless blender to just push that color back and then I had to go back to my B quadruple zero and just kind of flick a little bit of that blue in to hide that mistake. So not a huge deal, but you know, it's better to avoid the mistakes if you can. Next, I'm using E87 to darken things up even further. I'm doing a little shadow around those mushrooms and just following the very edge. I'm being a lot more sparing with these darker colors because um, I want there to be a lot of contrast. I don't want it to get too heavy handed because then, you know, if you don't have the light areas, then you don't have the contrast. You need both. You need the darks and the lights so that you have that strong variation of color. So I'm again working quickly, even though I probably shouldn't, um, to just outline that tree and create a little bit of shadow on the underside of those branches. And changing how I hold my marker when I get to those really thin areas, you see that my marker ends up being a lot more up and down so that I'm using the very tip of it so that you know the lines stay nice and thin. And then I'm going to blend that back out with the E84 and um, just kind of soften everything up. I wanted to create some uh, soft edges around that E87. Even though I want there to be some strong contrast, I don't want, you know, just really harsh lines that just look like harsh lines. I want it to look like shadows. So I'm making sure to blend out the edge of that. And then I'm going to go back to my E81 and uh, just blend over the highlighted areas there and uh, just fill in all of that space that remains. And I do like how these browns turned out. They are a little duller and I thought that worked because I wanted it to almost seem as if this were maybe like the entrance to the haunted wood that Ian likes to go into and kind of scare herself. So um, I did use the E87 to just go over the little stones in the pathway and darken those up. And then I'm going to color in the rest of the pathway with uh, E50 as the base tone. So I'm just going to quickly fill that in and then I'm going to add a bit of detail by pulling in the E51 first. And I'm going to do um, a little stippling on the edges, just creating that little dotted look that maybe looks like some more pebbles or some sandy edges on that little pathway. Just gives it a bit of a rougher texture. And then I also will add in the E53 and do the same thing. So I'll do that on both the left and the right side of the pathway. And then once that is all laid in, I'll just go over it again with the E50 and quickly blend it out so it is just a little bit more soft. For the mushroom stems, I'm using W1 to quickly add some color. And then for the tops, I'm going to add some reds. I started with R29 and R24. I did the R29 first on the right hand side and across the bottom of each of those little mushrooms. And then I'm going to fill in the highlighted area with the R24. Now, there wasn't quite enough contrast for me on them, so I am going to pull in a third shade and it's going to be a darker shade. I'm going to pull in R39 and I'm just going to go over that bottom right edge again and deepen that up and I'm not going to even blend that out. So I'm going to finish off this background with the uh, leaves on the tree and I debated back and forth about what color to do them in but I wanted to pull in 
Anne's red hair in another area of the card. So I decided to go with some oranges and I used YR12, YR14, and YR18. And I started with the YR12, I just did a quick base layer. And then I'm going straight to the YR18 and adding a bit of depth with those. And I'm just kind of flicking that in close to the stem. And then I will blend that out a little bit more with the YR14. Just dotting that over the edge of the YR18 so that it blends in with the YR12. And they were looking a little dull for me. I wanted them to match her red hair but not be the same tone as her red hair. So I decided to brighten them up with the YR04. I just went over each leaf on the edges with that shade to kind of just brighten them up. And then to add a bit more contrast, I added a tiny line of E19. Um, there's a little line drawn on each of those leaves. I did extend it a little bit more just to create a little longer of a crease on those. So that is the finished background and we're going to move on to our images now. So I'm going to start with Anne's skin and for that I'm using E000, E00, and E11. And I'm going to first go in with that E11 and add some shading to the sides of her face and under her hairline on her arms. I'm going to do it down the side and also add a little crease where her wrist would be. And then on her legs, I'll draw in a little kneecap and then also color down the sides of her legs and add a bit of shadow there. And then I will blend out that with the E00 and just soften that up so it creates a little bit of a uh, plump look to her little body, if that's the right term. Um, this is obviously a younger looking Anne. Um, then I'll come in with that E triple zero and fill in all of the white space and just get everything nice and blended. And then I wanted to add some rosy cheeks right away while that ink was still wet. So I'm going to use R20 to add a little oval shape. And then I'll use the R11 to go around that and soften that up into the rest of her skin. Her hair was a bit of trial and error for me. I'd never done red in the color that I really wanted it to be. So I just had to play and experiment with what I thought might look right. So I started with E13 and I'm kind of mapping out where I want my darkest colors to be eventually. Um, any areas that are kind of tucked behind her ear or tucked under another piece of hair or the parts that are gathered into the braids, those would be a little bit darker because the light wouldn't hit as much in those areas. So I added that and then I'm darkening it up with the E15, just going right over the E13 that I already laid in, but just not taking it up quite as far. Also darkening up her part so that the areas on the side of the head where it's kind of puffed out really look nice and shiny because that would be where the light would be hitting the most. Then I'm going to add in a bit of E19, which gives her a little bit of a darker red tone, which is what I was going for. So I'm just going to continue to work back and forth until I have a look that I like. And while I'm doing that, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about what I love so much about Anne. She just has always meant so much to me. I discovered her as a young girl and I was very bookish and loved to read and write. And I had this imagination that was kind of unlike most of the other kids that I knew, a little more, you know, dreamy, I guess you'd say. So I just immediately related to Anne. So I first fell in love with the books, and then when the Canadian Broadcasting Company's uh, miniseries starring Megan Follows came out, I was just obsessed. I swear I must have watched it a hundred times or more. Um, I was so obsessed that I actually walked down the aisle at my wedding to the theme song played on a baby grand piano. The song is called Homegoing. It's by Canadian composer Hey Good Hardy. 
and it's just so beautiful and the title of it home going just seemed perfect for a wedding so yeah that was my dream for a long time and I was so glad that I got to see that fulfilled back to the coloring I did want it to have a bit more of a orange tone since Gilbert calls her carrots so I did add in YR18 I also use that on the leaves so that's going to tie into those really nicely and then I also added a bit of YR12 in there for some more golden highlights. So her outfit was a bit tricky to do because this isn't what she would be wearing in the book or in the movie. It's more of an updated version with the little sweater, but um, I just tried to copy the color tones of one of Anne's outfits from the mini series. She had this um, blue plaid dress and then it had this brown, gray brown, beige colored um, kind of smock over top. So I turned the smock into a sweater and used E42, E43, and E44 for that and just imagine that um, maybe she was wearing that over her dress. Now also Marilla has that um, shawl where she lost her brooch and uh, locked Anne in her room when she couldn't find it because she thought Anne had lost it and made Anne confess and Anne came up with this confession that was completely not true but she just um, made something up so that Marilla would let her out of her room because Marilla wasn't going to believe her anyway. But anyway, that um, shawl was also kind of that brown gray tone so thought that would just tie in nicely. And then for her shoes, I just darkened it up by adding in E47 and E49. So now I'm going to work on her skirt. And again, I'm going to make it match that blue dress that she wears to school. So I'm using B41, B52, and B45. Just using the B41 and the B52 for the base layer of the skirt. And then I did let that dry for a few seconds before I went in with the details to add in that plaid pattern. If you don't let it dry in between, then the details are going to kind of spread out because the markers are going to want to blend together. So you just won't get as precise of lines. So I did go back with a second coat of those just to um, create that bit of depth because I wanted that to be under the plaid and I colored her hair ribbon to match. And then I'm going to, uh, while that's drying, I'm adding in B quadruple zero to add a little white collar and white socks. And then I will go in with my B45. So I'm just going to use the very tip of my marker again, and I'm going to do some stripes downward first, just kind of following the line of that skirt. And then I'm going to turn my paper and do the stripes across in the other direction. And I made them a little bit thicker on the um, horizontal version just to kind of mix it up. And I will go and add some more detail in a little bit um, with a white gel pen, but I'll do that at the very end of the coloring. I also added the same pattern for, for her hair bow because, you know, back then they were probably made from the same piece of fabric, so I wanted that to match. For her basket, I wanted that to be dark as well, so I went back to my E44 and E47, and I used the E47 first, and I'm adding that on the right-hand side since it's kind of tipped toward the left just very carefully coloring around those flowers and leaves. And then I'll fill in the rest of that with the E44. And then for the leaves in her basket, for her little flowers, I went back to my G43 and G46, which I used on the roof of Green Gables, but just didn't add that darker uh, G28 that I used in there. So it's a similar tone, but not exact. So it just ties everything in nicely without being too matchy. 
So I wanted to add in a bit more purple to kind of tie in to the tree that is in the back of the house, but also because of uh, Merla's brooch. It was an amethyst brooch. And so I wanted it to kind of just uh, be a nod to that. So I used V12 and V17, just the two shades since they're super tiny. Um, I just added the V12 first and then darkened with the V17 and then went back over the edge with the V12. And then the other uh, kind of daisy looking flowers, I wanted them to be Black Eyed Susans. So I used Y32 and Y35 for those and then added a dot of E44 into the centers. For that last flower, I wanted it to be a shade that would be found in the fall, so I decided to go with red. It will also tie in with the mushrooms. I used R37 and R39, and then I'm also going to color in a couple of the leaves with those, but I will add in a third shade, so I'm going to use the R35 to complete that since they are a little bit larger. And I did two of the leaves in these red tones. I just wanted to have uh, a couple leaves kind of blowing around to go with that sentiment once again, and that would add a few pops of color to the scene. For the other two leaves that look exactly like the ones on the tree, I used YR14 and YR18, and then went back and added a little line of that E19. And then for the third leaf, I wanted something else that would be bright. This will tie in to the Black Eyed Susans. I use Y13, Y15, and Y17, and also use those shades to color in some of the um, lines on the book. For the pages of the book, I used E40. For the bird, I wanted to tie in the blue of her dress, so I chose B95, B97, and B99. There's no particular bird in Anne of Green Gables. Well, there is a parrot in the book, but um, I just thought, you know, I needed another critter to kind of balance out the scene, and why couldn't there be a bird? Birds are everywhere. So that one doesn't really tie into the story exactly, but I think it still fits. Um, and I decided to make it a bluebird, so I used R11 and R20 for the face and breast. And to be honest, I didn't really love how that turned out, but I didn't really want to take the time to stamp a new one. I did try to go over the face with the B93, but I thought that looked worse. So I went back and kind of pushed that out with the R11 once again and just decided that the bird would be fine. And then for the mouse, I'm going to add those colors to his ear. And I tied in the mouse because of the story with the pudding where the mouse drowned in it when she was trying to serve it to her teacher, Mrs. Stacy. Um, and created quite a commotion, but I thought it would be kind of fun to have that little mouse to tie in that storyline. So all that's left are the books, and I'm going to do the top one in browns, because books didn't come in a lot of bright colors back then, so I thought this would look a little bit more realistic. I chose E21, E23, and E25 for the top one, and just created a highlight in the center of the spine to make it look rounded. And then for the other book, I decided to color it to um, tie into the roof of Green Gables. So I used G40, G43, and G46, and just did the same thing. Put the dark on the top and bottom of the spine, and then blended with the mid-tone, and then put the highlight down the center and then added a bit of shading to the top cover of the book as well. So I'm going to take a black gel pen first and kind of get that started. It always likes to be clogged and go over the eyes of my critters and Anne just to make them nice and bright again. And then for the white gel pen, I'm going to add some more plaid to her skirt, and I'm going in the center of the darker lines to create, you know, just another stripe on there. So 
going right in between the blue lines and over top where they cross. And I'll do the same on her hair bow so everything matches just the same. And I really like how that turned out. So I'm going to trim these out with their matching dies. And now I'm ready to stamp my sentiment on that background. I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink and I'm stamping that quote from Ella Montgomery that says, I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. And I didn't get a really good impression the first time, so I just pressed it down again. All of that ink didn't transfer the first time. And then I felt like the word there wasn't as dark as the others, so I just kind of inked it up in the center of the sentiment and pressed that down gently once again and um, still had the same problem. So I just pressed a little harder right over that word and that was much better. So I'm gonna set that off to the side to dry. And then for the inside of the card, I'm actually gonna do an insert because I'm using a darker colored cardstock. So I'm stamping in Noble Fur ink and I'm using the sentiment from Pumpkin Time that says leaves are falling, autumn is calling. And I added a few of those fallen leaves all around that. So the die that I used to trim down my background and the insert was the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Rectangle Stackables. So I'm going to glue that insert in first and my card base is a piece of Noble Fur cardstock from Lawn Fawn which I scored and folded to a standard A2 size card. So it is five and a half wide by four and a quarter tall. I'm going to glue my background to the front of that. Then I'll bring in my images and I'm going to adhere those down. And I'm starting with Anne because she's the largest and I wanna make sure that I have her placed exactly where I want her so that she's not overlapping the sentiment or Green Gables. I really had to um, make sure that I got her kind of sandwiched right in between those so that you could still see everything. And then I'm gonna add her little stack of books resting under the tree where she was probably uh, reading <laughs> while she was probably supposed to be doing some chores, but you know, um, that's what book lovers do. They gotta steal their little moments for reading whenever they can get them. The mouse I'm gonna add into the grasses over on the left hand side and I'm gonna tuck one of those red leaves behind him so that it's kind of caught in the grass there as well. The yellow leaf I played with here and there but decided that I wanted it to kind of break up the space of that hill on the left. So I'm going to add that as if it's just blowing in the breeze. And then I'll take the um, two little orange leaves and I'm gonna have those coming down from the tree up above and kind of framing in that sentiment. The last leaf I'm going to tuck over by the stack of books as if they were kind of caught over there or maybe Anne was even using one of them as a bookmark. So that's kind of just poking out from behind. And then the bluebird I'm going to have sitting on top of the stack of books, just kind of looking on as Anne is lost in her imagination there. I'm going to finish up this card with just the tiniest bit of stickles. I'll add a little bit to the tree behind Green Gables. And I'm also going to add it to the edges of the books, the uh, pages, since books are magic. And then I'm also going to add it to the centers of the Black Eyed Susans and a little bit on each of the leaves. So I want you guys to leave me a comment down below and let me know if you are as big of a fan of Anne of Green Gables as I am. And if you're not, is there another book character that you really resonate with? I would love to know. I love to chat books. So leave me a comment down below. There is a closer look at all of the detail and I'll give you another peek at the inside. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had so much fun creating this card, so I really hope you love it. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. 
If you're interested in any of the products I used, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one of them to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.